Miss Amanda went to ShmooCon 2017 this year, and she took along her Tascam and got some audio for us. So what you're going to hear first is uh, a bunch of gentlemen from Hack Ed and some other conference attendees at Shmoo talking about their experiences at Shmoo, and then you're going to hear Melanie Rich Wittrick uh, talk about some initiatives that she's doing to help uh, kids uh, get you know, into the information security industry, uh, you know, as soon as they, as they want to, she's trying to create some, uh, educational tools and, uh, and learning for, uh, for kids in middle school, uh, all the way down to middle school. So without further ado, uh, here's Miss Amanda at ShmooCon. Hello everybody. This is Amanda Berlin from Breaking Down Security Podcast. And I am here live at ShmooCon, uh, with talking with, uh, some, attendees. So we're going to go around the room and introduce everybody and uh, go from there. So, Hey, I'm John Ferris uh, with HackEd. We are a uh, seven-week cybersecurity hands-on keyboard training program here in D.C. Uh, the program is free if you can get in. There's no tuition. And then employers come to recruit and hopefully hire from the program. Hi, my name is Aaron Lint. I'm the VP of Research at Arxan Technologies. Uh, I'm here at ShmooCon uh, just figuring out what the latest trends are in IoT and other uh, related security issues. Hi, I'm James Green, uh, GreenJam94 on Twitter. Uh, I work with Vertifor doing uh, software engineering or application security. Uh, I'm here at ShmooCon to learn whatever I can. All right, awesome. So um, I know Aaron's been to ShmooCon before, um, but John and James, is your first time? Uh-huh. Yeah. What do you think so far? <laughs> um, it's it's uh it's amazing to come and, and check out what's happening. Um, I got to go to DefCon this year. This feels like definitely an extension of that. Um, just as far out, I think, as what I saw in Vegas. Um, how about you? Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of great talks so far. Um, really enjoyed the power talks uh, Friday night. Just um, it's kind of like the lightning talks in my side that I've been to, where it's just everyone's kind of first chance to talk and something get out there. So it was really cool to see those talks and then. Uh, I'm a fan of the other events that they have on select the locker village tool and stuff and checking out the wireless CTF, seeing how they deal with uh, giving me ideas for stuff to do in the future. So it's fun. It's awesome. This is my third and I really like it. This is one of my top three conferences. I absolutely I absolutely love it. They do a really good job organizing and uh, getting everybody together. Um, so tell me more about HackEd. You said it's just a, uh, like a training program for people getting into the industry? Yeah, you know, we went into this uh, looking to solve a problem for employers who are having a hard time finding talent. Uh, but we discovered we're solving a second problem, and that's for students uh, and people who want to change their careers. Um, it's not necessarily intuitive, you know, how to get into the industry. You can sort of hack around and be self-taught, and so many people are that way. Um, you can get a master's degree, but it's usually in policy. You can be online, distance-based. You can take a SANS course, which is really strong, but maybe very expensive if you're on your own. Um, so we're getting emails from people around the country saying, we're so glad you're here. It's an alternative to what's out there. Um, so it's been really neat getting to connect with uh, the people that are looking to, to get into the industry. Yeah, I find there's not a lot of entry-level stuff for people to learn, I think, unless they are really uh, out there looking for it. You know, there's not really any... I don't think anyways, any companies at all just do uh, basic red, blue team yeah. type stuff. Well, it can be so intimidating because, uh, you know, even even with formal training, there are so many employers right now that, and admittedly myself included, uh, where, you know, you sort of issue the formal training for, you know, and, and prefer people to have actual experience, right? And so these opportunities that you can actually put your hands on tech and, you know, in a, in a setting that's not like, uh, holy crap, I'm going to get fired if I screw this up. Um, you know, or every, fail, right? exactly. Yeah. Or if I don't, if I don't break this server, if I don't figure it out, um, the more opportunities that we can give people to just put their hands on real, actual, relevant things, right. uh, in a safe setting is, is going to be to everyone's benefit. Yeah, definitely. In, uh, my experience, the best way I've learned stuff recently on my own is by doing the, uh, challenges and the CTFs at conferences. So, um, hearing about other programs that aren't a couple thousand dollars to attend, uh, <laughs> makes it, Great for people like me. What kind of stuff do you guys cover? 
Um, so it's half on defense, half on offense, capture the flag at the end. Um, uh, all the major topics you can I mean, um, everything from infrastructure straight through to wireless. Um, we do a lot of work on uh, pen testing. I'm obviously not the tech guy behind all this. Um, <laughs> we have several uh, curriculum builders. Uh, foremost, Peter Kim, from, who wrote the Hacker Playbook, has been very involved, and in, he created the um, you know the Red Team side. Uh, he runs the Red Team at Blizzard, um, so he's been he's been really involved. Um, to your point about taking tests, we are coming out with this puzzle. It's coming out probably this week, so you can check it out online if you want to try and hack your way through his maze that he's created for you. It should be pretty interesting. There's a prize at the end. Sounds cool. Yeah, that's always fun. Uh, it's nice to have like the little side projects and stuff like that, that people can do to just tinker around and learn some more. I think that's a reason why a lot of people like the conferences because like low stress. Just you can ask anybody anything and they don't care. Well, there's also a, a correlation with people that attend hacker conferences and their desire to achieve, uh, like make achievements or achievement unlock sort of a thing. Yeah, you know, yeah. a finite set of goals where, <laughs> you know, you get a trophy case. And so, you know, I, I definitely share your experience. And as much as you can set those sorts of finite goals up, you will engage the people that tend towards yeah, this yeah. sort of a field. Yeah, the, the stuff downstairs that's going on is <laughs> unbelievable. Um, and we also discovered that, um, you know, because it's free, we've gotten lots of applicants. So we had 700 applicants for just 13 spots. So people are coming in are pretty sharp. But then how can we support the community, folks that didn't get in, or folks that can't quit their jobs to come and do this full time? So um, the puzzles are one way. Um, also looking to put out, like, a monthly webcast where you can stream and just, you know, hey, I'm Peter Kim, here's Wireshark today, or just kind of walk you through some stuff. Um, night courses, um, free resources for people. Um, so hopefully we can stay connected to them and, and encourage people to reapply, of course. Are the, uh, are the courses just held in D.C. then? Or are they any remote stuff? Nothing remote right now. Everything's in D.C. You do have to kind of quit your job to come do this, or maybe you're leaving uh, college or something or grad school and you have, have some, some in time. Between. In between time. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's where we are now, and then eventually maybe open other campuses or do some remote stuff. Awesome. Well, anybody else have anything uh they've seen at the conference or want to bring up? No, I, I think it's, it's absolutely great that, you know, we're getting more and more of a presence uh, with the education. You know, I, my background is in academia as well. Uh, how, do you, how do you guys, uh, you know, kind of balance this against, uh, you know, what people are coming out of college with? You know, where does that rank? You know, because that's what people think people would ask, right? You yeah. know, well, either I go to a, for a four-year degree or a two-year degree or whatever versus coming to HackEd. How do you guys, you know, how do you guys message that? Yeah, uh, we try not to, we're never going to compete with the college. We're not going to put four years in. That's not what we do. We would never prefer to, to put together, uh, to train someone to be an expert in seven weeks. There's no way. We're, we're a complement to what's happening in college or in grad school. Um, sure, you can come and not, not have a degree and apply and get in. We have some people that don't have degrees. I got on the first time around. Um, but uh, we're not, you know, not trying to, to compete to replace what that is, that's all about. Um, we actually get a lot of our, um, our applicants from college campuses, so we will um, let the career centers know that we're here or let professors know, computer science professors or STEM fields, um, and they circulate it because they want to make sure you know, their, their students get jobs you know, when they're done, so this is just another avenue for them to, to get into the industry. Okay. Do you have any industry partners? Um, yeah, we're, we have um, about 100 companies I want to see profiles from the first class, which uh, first class starts on Tuesday, so it's really exciting. Um, but, you know, we're also new or unproven. Um, I think in this industry in particular, it can be hard to get in. We're untested. Who, who is Hack Ed? What that's What's that all about? It might take a little while. But I think once we get in and people realize it is a good place to come and find talent, that they'll, they'll talk and they'll tell people, you know, hiring managers and word will spread. But it's, it's very important right now to find employers that will hire from the program. Great. I think it's hard to find good talent. Yeah, as I was saying, <laughs> I, I think it's you might have 101 hard. companies that are interested yeah. now that I'm sitting here. Uh, I, I mean, we've had uh, previous companies I worked for, whatever, they've, they've used uh, like talent scouts or, or whatever, trying to go out and find people and, you know, local talent that show up. They'll be like, oh, yeah, I, I game a little bit. Oh, all right, that's great. But they have no real, real life hands-on stuff that they can point to. Nobody's going to give them anything in real life to do because they 
you know, it's the whole it's do the you have experience to get it's the chicken and <laughs> the egg problem. Yeah, right, That's right. absolutely right. Um, I think that would be a good a good way to bridge the gap. Excellent. Some hands on stuff. Could I ask? You said um, other conferences that you like. Uh, yeah, a yeah. Couple of those that stood yeah, out to so, you. Yeah, or... um, so I'm based in uh, Northern Ohio, uh -huh. and I like ones that I don't necessarily have to fly to, <laughs> just because it's cheaper. Um, some of the top ones, I think, um, DerbyCon is in um, September in Louisville, Kentucky, and that's my favorite by far. Um, amazing people run it, and just a real like family atmosphere, good good venue, um, so what, about 2,000 people-ish that so go, right. um, just, that was, that was my first conference though too, so when I first started getting into InfoSec, that was my first one, so it's like <laughs> a special place in my heart. Um, there's Gurkhan, it's in Grand Rapids, Michigan, that's, um, that's pretty good, uh, Defcon, B-Sides Las Vegas, um, I always go to those, this one, there's a lot of B-Sides. Have you ever heard B-Sides? Oh, B-Sides? Uh, I got to go to the one in Atlanta recently. Okay, but... great. Awesome. Um, so I'll go to random B-Sides, too. But... Yeah. How about you guys? What, are your, what do you think your uh, some of your favorites are? Well, besides some of the ones that you mentioned, um, I'm a big fan of Converge Detroit. It's right close by me. <laughs> um, I think that one's uh, a weekend in May um, on the 11th, I think, is when it starts. Um, so if you want to check that out, it was fun. Last year they had a like a new version of a CTF that was uh, oh kind of based gosh. on like Magic the Gathering. Yeah, yeah. So it was a format that I've never really seen before, and uh, I believe that's come back as well. So I've had a lot of fun playing that. And uh, yeah, it's just a really good conference. I think it's nice that it's really close to me, so I don't have to worry about traveling to. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are plane tickets to get here. We're only hundred bucks, oh. so we can't complain too much. <laughs> True. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with your list. The only one I would add is Sky Dog Con in Nashville is an is an excellent uh, smaller conference. And I, I actually, as a contrast to DEF CON and, and all of the larger ones, uh, Sky Dog Con is a lot more intimate where you actually, you know, can engage with people and actually form personal relationships, which, you know, for, for and, you know, not to uh, say that there's a stereotype in our industry, uh, but there are a lot of people who have some social anxiety issues, myself included. And, me. and yeah, and you know, pretty much, you know, Everybody. raise your hand and, uh, and we can go from there. But uh, the, the smaller conferences are an excellent inroad into sort of building up the, you know, the, the knowledge of how to, you know, engage uh, and, and learn how to take in talks, learn how to engage in CTFs, and, and you know, get more comfortable before you kind of go to the, the granddaddy of them all in Vegas. Uh, and, you know, it's very, it's very... With 20,000 of your yeah. best friends. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the, the, look, for the, look for the local uh, the local small conferences is always my... And lo um, local meetups, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there's so, you know, so many metro areas have really good, whether that be through just the B-Sides organizations, some of them are through like an ISSA or the, others, uh, the other professional organizations for InfoSec. Uh, but you know, some of them are just sort of ad hoc, like I'm thinking like Burp Sec in Chicago. Right. Um, all of those uh, are great to look at. And, uh, you know, basically, you know, this is, this is one of those just Google it situations because because most of them have Twitter profiles. Most of them have uh, social media presence. So you can find something local to you fairly easily. Yeah, like a meetup. Or, yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All good. You want to go around and say how people can contact you? Sure. I know some of you already did, but you can do it again. I'm uh, at InfoSister, I-N-F-O-S-Y-S-T-I-R, on all the things, Twitter, IRC, uh, Slack. Friendster. Yeah, Friendster. Uh, <laughs> no, not Friendster. I've never been on Friendster. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah. Uh, I'm at Lynn Tile, L-I-N-T-I-L-E, on Twitter, Facebook, and all the things, but I, I still am on Friendster. Are you right? Yeah. I'll have to create an account. We can be friends. That'll be one. <laughs> That'll be one for me. <laughs> cool. And uh, I'm James Green. Uh, again, on Twitter, I'm GreenJam, J-A-M, 940. For some reason he had to get up and post Captain America. I don't know why that didn't stick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Ferris, uh, John J O N dot Ferris, F E R R I S, at hackeducate.com. Uh, hackeducate.com or uh, at hackeducate on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Hello, this is Amanda Berlin from Breaking Down Security. I am here at Schmoocon. 
2017 with Melanie. Rich Wittrig. What is that again? <laughs> <laughs> Rich Wittrig. Okay, awesome. Um, you were telling me earlier about a new, um, uh, like, kids in STEM thing that you're doing, right? Sure. Yeah, there are, there are a few different things I'm doing. Um, I'm a graduate student at Carnegie Mellon, and for my graduate project, I'm working on a activity demo and presentation for elementary middle school kids. And the goal is to get them interested enough in cybersecurity careers to start, like, looking for things to do and stuff like that. So I want to teach them about hacker mentality in the terms of break, secure, repeat, okay. which is to say how you can make things better by figuring out how someone might break them. Okay. Uh, like, what are some of the, like, tasks or projects or something that they would do? So I am going to have them, when I first get there, fill out a small form. Uh, the first question is write down the first three things you think of when you hear the word hacker. Okay. Because uh, I'm trying to establish That's a baseline. Be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then the second question is, you have a friend whose birthday is coming up, and they're really good at finding presents, but you want to hide this present from them so that it's a surprise. Okay. You have a closet that you can put it in. What would you do to make that closet harder to get into for your friend? Okay. All right. And so after we do that, um, I'm going to do a brief presentation. I, I've been talking to people about, you know, people who more diverse groups of people who are doing a more diverse group of jobs in the cybersecurity industry okay. and so I want to show them some examples because it's not just you know white guys programming all day in, in the industry anymore 400 pound I mean. hackers <laughs> it's not it's not just that you know <laughs> um, so and then after that I'll do um, a demo where it's like I have some different boxes and so we're talking about building a better box so I start with like a little paper cardboard box or something and like Okay. I put like a sticker in there and ask, you know, how would you get into that? And so they could just tell me, open it. Right. And I'm like, yeah, I yeah. like it. Yeah. Get a sticker. Uh, so that's like, well, what would we do to make it better? Uh, well, you could tape it shut. Um, but keep in mind, you know, what if tape costs like five cents and you only have like a penny in there? You might not want to use tape. Okay. Um, so we'll talk about like taping that, how after you tape the lid, you could also then go in through the bottom. Um, and break the tape. Right, exactly. Um, and then move on to a wooden box where you can like unscrew the hinges and stuff like that. Move on to a combination box because then we can also talk a little bit about pin number guessing. Right. Um, right. And so by the end of it, we've got like a reasonably secure box. And so then uh, do like a little group activity where they can draw as a group what they think is their ideal box. Or whatever. All right. Um, and so the final thing, and this is part of what I'm using to gauge my effectiveness, is I will then give them another worksheet, and this time it's write down the first three words we think of cybersecurity professional. And so I'm hoping that you know we're getting more like positive words that kind of correspond right. with them, uh, so that they're potentially identifying with it. And then the second question is just like, now what would you do to make the, your closet even better to like. Prevent your after friend. They, yeah, after right. they've gone through all those exercises right. and so, thought around it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So figuring out how, how they've been able to like, what, what they've been able to learn, basically, okay. and apply. So is all, all of that in um, in the span of like a day or like yes. a, work, okay, like a yeah. workshop day type thing? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep things like fairly fairly quick each each part because, you know, kids don't have that much of a difference. Span. I don't have that much of an attention span. <laughs> right, um, right. So it's it's kind of in the context of like right now my first school that I'll be visiting is part of a career day. So I will have like an hour and 15 minutes as a slot or whatever. Okay, and yeah, like, yeah. and so. I think that's a good time. Yeah, slot. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it's broken up into a lot of different parts. So hopefully not one part is too long. Right. Um, and I, I like that kind of stuff too. It's, it's, uh, I don't think a whole lot of schools get the whole lot out of the box thinking right <laughs> you know they're, they're doing uh you know, worksheets out of textbooks and um not real life skills that they yeah. would probably be using <laughs> yeah and it's it's another thing where i found that this type of critical thinking is sometimes discouraged among kids because it's viewed as like defiance yeah um however i feel like that type of thinking is 
critical in order to do things like cybersecurity because how are you going to try to figure out <laughs> how to fix something unless you understand how it works and right. how are you going to figure yeah. that out unless you like poke at it. Um, so I'm, I'm working and being very careful to present this as we are doing this to build a better box. We're not just talking about like, oh yeah, we're going to break stuff. It's right, like right. we're breaking it to figure out how to make it better. Um, give that like positive channel. And so then the other thing that I'm very involved with is CTF, um, the capture the flag competitions. Mm -hmm. um, for kids too? Uh, for high general? schoolers okay. is kind of what I'm working on right now. Uh, <laughs> last semester I did an independent study um, with David Brumley, who's the uh, faculty advisor of PMP. Okay. And um, I came up with a two-hour-ish uh, CTF aimed at people who um, only know how to use a browser, essentially. Okay. So we talked about it being aimed for 10th graders. As far as I'm concerned, though, if, like, if, you're, uh, if you don't know much about security, you might as well be a 10th grader. It doesn't matter how old you are. Right. So that's kind of the, the goal that I had. So I came up with some some challenges that are designed to get you to like go out on the internet and figure out the answer. So there's one where I very clearly indicate that it's a SQL injection. Okay. And so if you start Googling and you go to the Wikipedia page, like the first example of a SQL injection works. Okay. It's just a All matter right. of like, you're like, oh, that's Using that critical thinking also. Right. Just to, um, to actually Google something. Yeah. And also just, you know, Could you getting tell used the rest to of our, energy, uh, our industry how to do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just working on that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a tricky, it's a tricky situation because I don't feel like it's possible to really teach someone cybersecurity. You have to, you can provide them with materials for them to find, but they have to be, they have to be motivated to look for it. Right. Otherwise, it's not really the same thing. Yeah. So that's kind of the, um, the thing that I'm focusing on when it comes to, to C, like intra-level CTF, trying to get them interested enough, get them used to like, hey, I can get points for this and stuff like that. And then hopefully they go out and I have a, so my website securitycandy.com and I have a resources page that has a lot of like war games and stuff oh, like yeah. that listed just as like a sort of a, if you're trying to get into CTFs, check out these. Oh, that's um, perfect. Yeah, I was, yeah. Uh, um, we were talking about mentoring the last podcast that we did, and um, that's, that's, a, yeah, that's a really good resource for, you know, up and, up and coming, you know, people right in, uh, new in the industry and everything, so. Yeah, and it's one of those things where it's something that I like to have on hand, so it's like, well, if I like it, other people right. might find it useful. Right. I, I feel like there's a lot of uh, super advanced stuff, you know, once you, once you look, if, if, when, once you express an interest to be, a, uh, you know, becoming a hacker, getting into the security industry, there's a lot of, like, DEF CON talks, or all the talks here are all, yeah. like, super, I mean, great, right. great material, but super technical, and it, I think there's a gap there, yeah. you know, in the, in the and that's, beginning level. Yeah, absolutely, and, and that's also becoming more and more <laughs> noticeable in CTFs, just because it's, like, getting harder and harder yeah. because the industry is moving forward, and that's super cool that, like, we're doing all of these cutting edge things. However, trying to get people started on the same CTFs that I got started on like five years ago or whatever, it's a very different type of uh, yeah, yeah. entrance, I guess. Um, so yeah, I feel like it's really important to figure out how to like bridge that gap um, in order to get people able to do current CTFs. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people look at a CTF and are, are really intimidated it's extremely intimidating. <laughs> yeah. um, it was certainly very intimidating for me, and that's part of why I care so much about it. Um, so I got started with this like when I was an undergrad at University of Texas at Dallas, working on my computer science bachelor's. And I found out about Computer Security Group, and they did hacking competitions. And I was like, oh, that sounds pretty cool. <laughs> um, so then I, I went to a meeting, and I was late because they had an old website up with the wrong room or whatever. And... So it's this dark room full of dudes looking at a projector screen. And I open the door and I'm like, is this the computer security group? <laughs> and they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh, sorry, I'm late. The site had the wrong room. And then one of them was like, that's why we don't allow girls. And I was like, I laughed. We all laughed. I thought it was funny because, like, obviously it's a huge room full of dudes. And so it's like addressing the elephant in the room or whatever. Um, so then I come in and it's like crowded, so I'm like scooching past, but then no one like talks to me, nobody like oh, makes yeah. eye contact right, or right. anything like that. So I'm just like sitting in the back and they're 
in week two of a three week series on reversing. So I'm just like, those are definitely some letters on the screen uh, that appear to have some sort of meaning for That happens every time I look people. at anything had to do with reversing. Yeah. <laughs> It was uh, it's definitely not the uh, the easiest one to jump in on, but I, I kept going because I'm stubborn. And what I figured out after a couple weeks is that even though like they wouldn't start conversations with me, if I started going up to the guys and being like, "Hey, what you working on?" They would be like very happy to show me. Right. So there's a lot of them on outgoing enough to make the first right. yeah, there, attempt. Yeah, there's that, and there's also, like, some of them are just so focused in on what they're doing that it doesn't even yeah. occur to them. Um, so I, I did that. I worked on, you know, getting more people into the, that computer security group and making that one more accessible, and that's when I, you know, found out about PPP, the number one hacking team or whatever. So right, I was like, right. it might be cool to go to that school one day. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it's the sort of thing where, like, because it was not easy for me, um, but I felt like it was very rewarding, I am I have a lot of insight into what could make it more accessible for yeah, other people. bridge those gaps so they don't have to yeah. jump to the same hoops or get discouraged yeah. right away. Or even just understand that it is frustrating and, like, that's fine. <laughs> you yep. know, that's, the, that's a big challenge, I feel like. Because it is very frustrating. And... Uh, and I, th I think CTFs, I mean, personally, anyways, I've learned more doing CTFs, coming to conferences, or, or, or doing them, you know, with other uh, groups in my area. I've learned more doing that than I ever did in, in college. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I felt that same way in undergrad. I felt like the, the stuff that I got the most out of was stuff that I went and found on my own. And I try to really encourage people to do that because, you know, some people ask me, like, hmm, what classes would you recommend to people that want to go to CTFs and I'm like, right. I don't know, just like, go find a CTF team. <laughs> do it. Yeah. yeah like, I mean, it's, Sit down and... Yeah, I mean, a computer science degree is a good, like, baseline um, in a lot of cases, so, you know, just following that curriculum as you're doing it, but, like, there, that's not the only degree that works, and it's just kind of, well, a lot of times school is also what you put into it is what you get right. out of it. Right. So, um, yeah, it's a... It's important to, to get involved with that sort of thing. Maybe more more school programs will start integrating stuff like this, which I feel like would be very nice. Good. <laughs> yes, definitely. I yeah. think it's definitely needed. Yeah, for sure. Um, so this is your first move, huh? Yes. What'd you think? It's awesome. I really like the uh, <coughs> I, I, I like the size. Um, it's you know it's obviously not huge and overwhelming like DEF CON. Um, <laughs> But it's also, like, still a decent-sized con, and, you know, you're, like, seeing people you've never seen before and stuff like that. Um, I, I like the different tracks, and, um, I mean, it's just it's just really great to meet people and Definitely. make the contacts and stuff like that. Right. So. Like us, we met in the bar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, the, like, I mean, people laugh. When I say, like, now the parties are the important things for the cons. And I'm like, no, seriously, like, I'm not just, like, Jägermeister, like, right, hey, just right. drink sort of thing. It's like, no, that's where you actually could talk to these insanely brilliant people. And you're just just talking and figuring stuff out. It's yeah, it's so su super uh, great ideas and, you know, connections and everything always yeah. happen. And it was fantastic, too. So I got the, the Schmooze of Student Scholarship. And um, so I also got to meet a few people that, you know, the Schmoozers at right, uh, right. the event. And so that's always, you know, really, really great to be put in touch with people that are specifically yep. looking at students. <laughs> right, right, um, definitely. Yeah, so that was, a, that was an excellent additional opportunity. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, do you want to tell everybody how they can get a hold of you? Sure. Um, so my website's securitycandy.com. Um, I'm also on Facebook and Twitter, uh, at Security Candy. Um, and I've got my contact info there. I'm happy to talk about CTFs, uh, you know, cybersecurity education, all that stuff. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this yeah. is fun.